Is legal graffiti beneficial to Manchester? Yes, you know, completely 100%. Is illegal graffiti? It depends on the person that you ask, really. Everyone's got their own points of view and opinion. It's probably more emotional than people that paint just paint on canvases um, and stick their artwork in galleries because you're interacting with other artists, basically. You're not just doing a piece of artwork and that's it, you know, end of. You're actually working with people and within a community yeah, yeah, yeah. as well, so you know, like it is quite emotional. And when you go into the northern quarter into Stevenson Square, there's quite a lot of um, commission graffiti, and once again, people go on street art tours and you know are interested in the artwork around the city um, and actively like find it. You know what I mean? There's people on the internet that, that, that search for graffiti and, and you know that, that have Flickr pages dedicated to all of the street art in Manchester. Graffiti's contribution to Manchester's art scene is clear, but can graffiti also benefit Manchester financially and culturally as well? Graffiti art is from people um, in that community and they're just expression, expressing their creativity. So it's, I think it's actually quite vital to, for businesses and artists to work together um, because I, I do think that it can it can make the area look nice and vibrant, uh, friendly, welcoming. I think if they work together, yes. Um, I think that if it's a case of, um, you know, going onto a building and tagging it or, you know, just spray painting it without the owner's permission, then obviously there's going to be some kind of, you know, fraught relationship there. Um, but I think if they work together, they can create something quite beautiful, actually. You know, if you go to places like Bristol, um, Brighton, they actively, you know, let people paint um, certain areas. I think Brighton's, I read something the other day, um, the economy has grown, you know, regarding street art, basically, graffiti, like, you know, they, they've, they've earned, like, hundreds of thousands of pounds by people coming in and actually, you know, wanting to go to look at the graffiti. So, you know, it's benefited their local economy. The redecoration of Woodford Recreation Ground Skate Park is a prime example of how graffiti can be used to positively impact a community, getting the youths who vandalised it in the first place to replace the tags with colourful animations. We do use it as a way of um, what we call community paper, where groups of people who have been um, convicted for anti-social offences, anti-social behaviour type offences like graffiti, we've used them to use their skills and they have sometimes very evident skills to use it in uh, appropriate places, for example uh, a, a skateboard park in, in various places or uh, for example Woodford Community Park and so it helps people, helps young people take ownership of the, of, of the place. However, graffiti is a double-edged sword and where one side benefits, another loses. Somewhere along the line, there's always a drain. As a business, we make money from graffiti, but, you know, there's, there's morals as well. Now, if I was to see some areas and I didn't have to revisit it as a managing director to go and do that job, I'd be happy thinking, do you know what, we've not got to go back there because it's graffiti free, and I can say that sincerely. We are spending about a million pounds a year in Stockport just on graffiti and other related sort of um, deliberate mess. It's difficult to remove. It's a specialist job to remove it. It's not just something that you can do easily. Well, most pe most of the time when people contact me about graffiti, as a local member and even as a deputy leader of council, it's not a positive thing. We're cleaning up after people have basically vandalised somebody else's property. And it's not normally the type of graffiti that has any artistic value. But even if it did have, we'd still have to remove it because people don't want their property vandalised. I think you've got the professional graffiti artists where they've got the tags, they've got the signatures, whatever you want to call it. I think graffiti artists now, I think they've set a precedence now, they've not come down hard enough initially on the vandalism. And again, I think the police or the authorities have become to accept it and instead of stamping it out, they're just learning to control it. It doesn't really make sense to send someone to prison uh, when they could be helping other people, doing community service and, you know, just kind of being more positive uh, and beneficial to the community that they live in, basically.
people are actually changing their their idea of what graffiti is and whether it is a um, you know an antisocial art form or not. But like I said, that depends on the context of how you do it. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to go around doing it illegally, then you know you have to deal with the consequences.